Hello once again, I'm Keith Haywood and welcome to another midweek message on behalf of St Anne's Church Chasetown for Wednesday the 7th of July 2021. What a great week it's been for international sports fans. If you're into football then it's been the European Championships and the thrill of seeing England reach the semi-finals which they'll be playing later t this evening. If tennis is for you, then you've probably been glued to the TV watching Andy Murray at Wimbledon, only to have your dreams of him becoming crowned Wimbledon champion shattered with his defeat in the third round. Or maybe cricket's your forte you've been catching the highlights of England playing in their T20 series against Sri Lanka. Or, if you're like me, then following the British and Irish Lions rugby tour in South Africa. Or the World Summer Series has been the one to watch. Of course, it may be you don't care much about any of these sports, yet you can't wait for the Olympic Games to start in Tokyo in just over two weeks time well then again perhaps you're like a friend of mine I was talking to only last week who told me that he disliked all sports to which he added with a cheeky grin on his face after all there are no sports mentioned in the Bible well of course there are lots of things we do today that are not specifically in the Bible simply because we live in an ever-changing world with constant advancements like our ways of communication and our means of transport to name but just two of many and it's true that although we don't find many biblical references to sport there are with just a little stretch of the imagination just a few for instance, did you know that wrestling is mentioned in the Bible? In Genesis chapter 32, we find Jacob wrestling all night with an angel in order that he might receive a blessing from God. And then there's boxing. In his first letter to the church in Corinth, the Apostle Paul speaks about the determination that's needed of a boxer to win a fight. He doesn't just punch the air as in shadow boxing, but punches with the determination to win. And have you come across the biblical code of conduct for footballers in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9? And I quote, Whether we are home or away, we make it our aim to please him. And finally, just one more. Did you know that the first tennis player is mentioned in the book of Genesis? In Genesis chapter 41 and verse 46, we're told, Joseph served in Pharaoh's courts. Well, yes, okay, I know it's all a little tenuous and tongue-in-cheek. But of course, the main parallel in the, the, the Bible has to, has to sport are the many references that compares the life of the Christian to that of an athlete, particularly in the New Testament and especially in the writings of Paul. After setting up and establishing new churches throughout his travels, Paul spends a lot of his time writing letters to those churches. They were letters of advice and encouragement, as well as ones of correction and admonishment for some of their words or actions. And in some of his letters, this image of an athlete in training appears time and again, emphasizing that if the athlete is serious about what they're doing, and if they really have their sights set on winning the prize, they must be disciplined in their training 
even to the extent of self-denial. From his letter to the church in Corinth, for instance, Paul emphasizes the things that are important in the life of a serious athlete or sports person. I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 to 27. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. And in the preceding verse to this passage, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Paul emphasizes that if they're really serious about winning the prize on offer, then the athlete or the sports person must be focused, disciplined, committed, and train hard. And he likens this to the Christian life, saying that those who profess to be Christians followers and disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ must be focused on Jesus and his way of life, disciplined in prayer, reading the Bible and worship of him, committed in serving him by serving others, and train hard in walking close to him. It's not easy but if we're serious about following Jesus, then it's necessary. And the prize that Paul speaks of for those who are faithful to Jesus, well, it's not an earthly crown, medal or trophy, but a crown of glory and eternal life with Jesus. Wow, what a prize that will be. A prayer. The writer to the Hebrews says this Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, who is the starter and finisher of our faith. So, Lord Jesus, as I seek to live my life ever more closely in line with yours, give me the discipline and commitment that I need to keep my eyes firmly focused on doing only your will, that finishing the race, I may boldly claim the crown of glory that awaits all who follow you. Amen.